Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1174. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to do a recap of the first quarter of 2023 because, boy, did a lot happen during this quarter. And also, we got some big news today that is affecting the market positively. Now, it's no secret that I've been very bullish. I've been telling everyone that the bearishness is much too high, and we're going to talk more about that in just a minute. But year-to-date, the S&P 500 is up 6.56%. The Dow Jones still slightly negative at negative 0.01%, and the NASDAQ is charging ahead up 16.21%. So the first three months of the year look really strong for technology, which was the trade that had the worst year last year. It seemed like all of the pundits were saying that technology was over, you had to be in the value trade, that was the way to go. Well, value is already over and not performing. So that argument has been put to rest. But let's review some of the craziness that happened this quarter and why we had so much bearishness. Of course, we had a mini financial panic with the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, the bank that works with most tech startups in Silicon Valley. And that was almost a huge catastrophe, but the Fed stepped in to backstop all the depositors. So nobody's going to lose money there except the shareholders and the senior executives who may get their compensation of the last five years clawed back. We also had the failure of two regional banks, a forced takeover of Credit Suisse, and a flight of deposits from smaller institutions. As I said, the Fed backstopped Silicon Valley Bank and also Signature Bank and set up a special lending facility for other banks, which helped end that crisis. Now, the positive news that came in today was that the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge showed a less than expected increase in prices. That gauge is the Core Personal Consumption Expenditures Index. This index excludes energy and food costs, and it rose 0.3% in February, which was less than 0.4%, which was expected by economists. The other statistic that came in was the University of Michigan's Consumer Sentiment Index, which fell in March to 62, down from 67 in February. Again, economists were expecting 63. And in general, that data is revealing that consumers are increasingly looking for a recession coming. Consumer sentiment is like consumer confidence. It's how do they feel about making large purchases in the future. And so if sentiment is down, then people don't have the confidence to go and spend money. And along with consumer confidence being down, retail investors are still very pessimistic about markets, even though they're a little bit more positive, slightly more positive than they have been. The numbers show bullish sentiment is at 22.5%, which is up from 20.9%. But that's still unusually low, according to the American Association of Individual Investors. And for a sixth straight week and 46 out of the past 65 weeks, bullish sentiment has been lower than normal. The historical average of bullishness is 37.5%. So at 22.5%, we are way below the norm. And likewise, the bearish side fell to 45.6%, up from 48.9%, but remains unusually high. The historic average for bearish sentiment is about 31%. So at 45.6%, we're still way above where we normally are, which is very bullish, since this is typically a contrarian indicator. Now, there's one category that I really wanted to talk about, and that is precious metals. Precious metals did spectacularly well in the month of March. Silver was up 14.37% in March. Large mining stocks were up 13.38%, 
and small mining stocks were up 13.3% in March. I think what this tells us is an important distinction in what makes precious metals run. Now, we all know that precious metals prices are manipulated and JP Morgan has been charged and paid fines for it. So it's not a theory, it's fact. However, a lot of people mistakenly believe that precious metals move higher with inflation. And we had a lot of inflation in the last year and we didn't really see the precious metals move that much. So why do they move a lot in March? Well, as I started this podcast talking about bank failures, it's exactly that loss of confidence that makes people buy precious metals. It's when there's problems with currencies. It's when there's lack of confidence in government. It's when the banking system is failing. These are the types of things that make people want to own precious metals, much more so than rising inflation does. So that's why in the last month, we've seen precious metals really take off. And I think that is only the beginning. I think we're going to see more of that. And April and May could bring some really spectacular rises in our precious metals investments. So this is something that we'll be watching and I'll be reporting back to you on, but I just wanted to make that important distinction that it's really about the loss of confidence and issues with government banking and currencies more so than inflation that is going to make our precious metals really take off. Of course, I like gold too, but I think percentage-wise, silver will outperform gold quite handily. Gold is on pace to finish March 9% higher. So there you have it. Inflation is moving in the right direction and the market likes it. The Fed is backstopping the banking crisis and the market is feeling more confident, but people are showing that they don't think that's going to be solved very soon by moving into precious metals, which I think are going to have spectacular performance this year. So we're still bullish on stocks. We're bullish on precious metals. Things are still moving in the right direction. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And all of my podcasts are in my wealth mentoring library on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts, where you can also sign up for my weekly newsletter. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.